Do I regret spending $3,500 on this? Oh, son of a bitch. No. Do I recommend you spend $3,500 on this? No, probably, probably not. I wore this thing for 30 days to scare the crap out of myself. Hey, oh. Oh, God, oh, God. And to rapidly accelerate my wrinkling process so that you wouldn't have to. Let's start by talking about what it's like filming with this thing. Two months ago, I was watching Casey Neistat's Vision Pro video where he was walking around New York and he was looking at all these screens that no one else could see. And it gave me this really unique idea. I've always wanted to make educational content. I educate as my day job. And this is my first video, so I hope you like it. But I was like, it would be really cool if someone made educational videos where instead of having the graphics popping up on the screen, what if their materials were just hanging in space so that they could point to them or even like walk through them as they talked about them? Kind of like Iron Man. I still think it's a really cool idea. The videos that I made with the Vision Pro were by far my best performing on YouTube Shorts. And it was also really cool to be able to read my scripts without anyone being able to see my eyes. It actually made filming these videos really easy. But at the end of the day, I've learned that I really don't want this to be my thing, at least in the long term. The first, maybe most obvious issue is that this thing is heavy. I underestimated how heavy it was, and I had a lot of fun, but I got really tired of wearing a laptop on my face. <laughs> also, the core idea of having images hanging in the air that I could talk about, I think was pretty cool, but it also gave people motion sickness. I think that's pretty addressable. I took the feedback and by the end of the month, I think I found a more stable way to present the information, but then it became really similar to just a basic slideshow, like traditional educational videos. And then it brings up the question of like, okay, well, what's the point of the Vision Pro then? And lastly, I just miss making more casual, funny videos. For the last year, I made 365 daily videos. They were shorter. So now that I've learned how to script a longer video and I've gotten a little more comfortable talking to a camera, thanks to the Vision Pro videos. I'm excited to get back to making short funny videos for Instagram and long educational videos for YouTube. Hopefully it'll be a best of both worlds. So the last section of this video is gonna be my more general review of the Vision Pro. I think it might be a little more relevant if you're thinking of buying it or you're just curious about what it's actually like using this thing. I, I don't think it's good for the average person. I basically treated it like a business expense, like buying camera equipment, but outside of making content with it, I didn't really find a good practical use for it. But genuinely, it is one of the most impressive pieces of technology that I've ever gotten to experience. Just the idea, the concept that I can control my environment so easily and intuitively with my eyes, it's so hard to explain how exciting that is. The future applications of this, I think are really, really cool. Like I imagine a world where I could look down a city block and see all of the Yelp reviews of uh, my local restaurants pop up in front of me and I could read all of them and then I could make a reservation just by looking at one of them. One of my closest friends, you also mentioned a pretty cool practical use for this. Imagine you don't wanna buy a business class plane ticket for like $3,000. What if you just had something like this back in your economy seat, but then you could just change your environment to feel like an empty theater? Wouldn't really solve like a leg room restriction, but I think for the average person who isn't comfortable feeling claustrophobic, it could really enhance their experience. In general, to me, this represents a pretty cool direction that our technology has been taking over the last year. There was a period where I feel like a lot of our major technological advancements were either questionable or even dangerous at times, like the metaverse. What, what was that? Um, in crypto, I've actually heard some pretty cool applications of it, but I don't think I'm out of line in saying that it was also abused in a lot of ways. But this year, I feel like way more practical technology has taken the spotlight. Like AI, with the intention of hopefully making our lives easier someday. Or augmented reality, somehow enhancing our experience. 
I think there's obviously a long way that we have to go in both realms, but I think overall, I'm pretty optimistic about where things are going. So what this could become just genuinely, truly excites me. Maybe someday this will come in a more practical package, like some glasses or even contact lenses. That would be crazy. But for now, I think I'm gonna stick to using the laptop on my desk rather than the one that I have to strap to my face.